All right, Arizona, how are you doing? You having a good time? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm afraid this time is about to end soon because uh, we're going to talk about fat. <laughs> Sorry if there's children in the room. Uh, but uh, in order to judge whether this is hot or not, scientifically, uh, let's start by talking fat, by mentioning two facts about fat that you should know. Because as a matter of fat, <laughs> uh, first of all, too little fat ain't no good. Okay? On the other hand, the second fact about fat is too much fat ain't no good either. So the problem is there's not such a black and white thing, like there's not too fat and too thin. It's like a gradient, okay? So we have this 50 shades of flab, you know? And only in the middle we have like what is called a healthy balance, okay? The question is, where does this start and where does it end? And you know, occasionally we used to just exceed the threshold and then it gets really bad because the problem is, uh, no, the problem is not Tinder, the, <laughs> not here, uh, the problem is inflammation. Okay, and inflammation is a very complex process, a very nasty phenomenon, so we have to address it seriously, scientifically. Um, and inflammation is pretty much known, so I have to warn you what's coming next is a pretty nasty image. Inflammation is basically everywhere, right? Um, but it also happens in fat. Uh, and if we want to combat obesity, we have to combat uh, inflammation. But in order to fight inflammation, we have to know our enemy, okay? So what is inflammation all about? Well, there's four hallmarks of inflammation. The first one being rubor, which is redness, okay? The second hallmark of inflammation is tumor, which is swelling, okay? The third hallmark of inflammation is dolor, which is pain, okay? And the fourth hallmark of inflammation is calor, which is heat, okay? And all of them together make up what is called inflammation, what again, we have to fight in fat to fight obesity. Now, but in order to judge whether we have inflammation in fat, in simple terms, whether fat is hot or not, uh, there's a lesson, a general lesson to learn here. We must not be superficial, but we have to look closer, okay? And if we look closer into fat, we will see that it's populated with immune cells, okay? And now we study these immune cells in fat mice as well as in lean mice to understand their contribution towards inflammation because potentially these immune cells are the cause but also the cure to inflammation and thus to obesity, okay? Um, but, okay, we already got to know each other a little better, right? So I can share something very private, very personal with you. Uh, I'm single. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm single cell enthusiast. And this is, this is very valid here because we need to study these immune cells at the single cell level. They are very individual. There's very different types of immune cells, okay? They have very cryptic names like M1, M2, T, B, NK. Uh, and they are very individual, so they, they all have their individual gang sign, okay? So all have different gang signs. And in order to show you that we really need to study them at the single cell level, I want to perform an experiment, okay? So I want every one of you to just select your favorite immune cell and just show this gang sign. There's no right or wrong here. So just select your favorite immune cell and show this gang sign, okay? And now we make a measurement, which is a photo by wonderful Ina. So Ina will take a measurement of all our immune cells here. All right, now we get this into the computation, okay, and we make, an, this is what was a snapshot measurement, so we get an average value here of the immune cells uh, present in the audience. Um, and if we do the math, actually it comes out, we count all the fingers, right, we know how many people are here, and the average is 3.5. Now there's two problems with this. First of all, there's no immune cell 3.5, right? We have three and we have four, but there's no 3.5. Uh, the second of all, 3.5 could be the result of very different populations of cells, very different measurements. For instance, one of them, one of them, two of them, two of those, two of those, or two of those, two of those. So you get the idea. We really, in order to, uh, to identify which immune cells are there that could potentially drive or counteract inflammation, we need to measure at the single cell level. Now, fortunately, in Israel, we, de we developed a method that can do just that, okay? And we call this method the molecular microscope. 
And with this method, we are able to measure from single immune cells what kind of messages they have for us to identify them, to find out for every single immune cell what it is, okay? And this is just astounding. So do you want to see how this molecular microscope works? Yes, exactly. So look at this. Now we can, from a single immune cell, see what single messages it has for us. And it looks like this. Wow. Isn't that cool? Uh, definitely is. By the way, anyone recognizing this gene, I buy you a beer. Have your guess now. Uh, almost. <laughs> um, the, the pro so this is amazing. The problem is this is way too simple because we don't just have a single cell with just a single message, okay? In fact, we have 20,000 cells with each 20,000 messages. Um, and that's a matrix with 400 million entries, okay? So my two bosses in Israel, they came to me, they said, Lawrence, but, but you, you know, you're good with computers. Can't you deal with that? Can't you deal with these 20,000 dimensions? Uh, and I said, uh, yeah, sure, I guess, but maybe 20,000 is a little too many to begin with. Maybe we just, you know, start with two. Uh, <laughs> so what we did is uh, some sort of dimensionality reduction. Um, so let's imagine we have a highly dimensional feature space, okay? And by highly dimensional, I mean like three dimensions. Uh, and every of these dimensions is one of these messages from, from cells, right? And then in this three-dimensional feature space, we have all our cells, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's start with seven instead of 20,000 to keep it simple. Um, and now we try to f find like similarities between those cells in a two-dimensional plane, okay? So we, we use a two-dimensional plane that is not uh, aligned with the coordinates of our multi-dimensional feature, feature space, but instead we project each and every cell on this feature space, okay? And you will see that this feature space has new coordinates, which are like linear combinations of our, of our feature vectors, which is like x, times message one plus y times message two, you get the idea, right? So in our new like feature, uh, in our new uh, two-dimensional plane, we now have groups of cells, like neighbors. So they are very similar to each other. They are like groups of, of individual cells that we can now identify. And we can do this not only for three dimensions and not only for seven cells, but for 20,000 each of this. And then we get like a new map, a new coordinate system where we have all these immune cells, okay? And it looks like this, basically you have, you have something like coordinates from, from north to south and from east to west. And then you can draw all your 20,000 individual cells there, right? And um, the good news is we identify all the immune cells that we already know, right? We have the B cells and the, the T cells and the NK cells and the M cells. But we also found something new, an immune cell type that has not been known before. Um, and uh, these cells are pretty cool, which you will see in a second. Um, and we call these cells lump cells, okay? And to me, it must not be a coincidence that we found these very cool cells in the southwest of our map. So these are basically cells in Arizona, right? Isn't that, isn't that cool? Uh, why are these? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I, I didn't make this up, right? They are just there. I mean, that's science. Uh, why are they so cool? Uh, let's look at them. So here we have fat, right? In the black bubble in the middle, this is basically a fat cell. And this fat cell is surrounded by our green lump cells, okay? Um, and now in this fat cell, we have all these evil molecules, okay? Like cholesterol uh, and all these molecules that could potentially drive the inflammation. Um, However, our lump cells, they are surrounding the fat cell, so they basically restrain all these evil molecules uh, in the fat cell in what is called a crown-like crown -like structure. Because if you look at this from the top, right, it looks like a crown. So bottom line is what we found is that crown-like structures of lump cells restrain cholesterol and thus inflammation in the fat, right? Um, if this was a little too complicated to you now, uh, let me wrap this up once more again for you. L to the A to the M to the Z. Wanna be, non obese. What you need is the keys increase, release degrees, disease and peace. L to the A to the M to the Z. Lum says you ask what's that? 
crown extractions on my head. Now they patrol with full control, cholesterol in check. It's a homeostatic crew shot, an intercellular group hug. With inflammation, it's too hot. So better do what Trem2 does. Embrace the fat, don't let it step out of the pad, it's super. Useful for a balance, along a feeding challenge. And if you see LAMC, you've really got the right talent. L to the A to the M to the Z. Wanna be non obese? What you need is the keys increase, disease increase, the release degrees. L to the A to the M to the C. Thank you, Arizona.